Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, our very special guest is Phil Singleton. Phil is a web designer, an SEO expert, and an award-winning author. He is the co-author of the best-selling book, SEO for Growth, The Ultimate Guide for Marketers, Web Designers, and Entrepreneurs. It's been an Amazon bestseller. It's been listed as a top marketing book by Forbes, Mashable Oracle, and the Huffington Post. It's also been featured on MSNBC, Entrepreneur, and Search Engine Journal, a whole lot of other places too numerous to mention. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a ton, man. This is so awesome. Thanks a lot, Seth. Ah, you are very welcome. We are glad to have you. So something that fascinated me about your background is you're running a thriving digital marketing agency. You're an SEO expert. You've got a literal best-selling book on the topic, yet you got a D in computer science. Yes. How does, how does one go from a D in computer science to literally an authority on the topic? Really, really funny. I mean, I went to school. I'm basically an introvert by nature. I went to school um, for finance. Uh, right out of school, I got a job in um, insurance, actually. And I was there for like three or four years. Ended up being, you know, kind of this miserable kind of a soul crushing cubicle job, I guess, type of deal. Um, and um, I ended up just knowing that wasn't the place for me and that picked, packed up my bags and ended up moving to Asia. Of course, I was in my 20s wow. uh, back then. So it was quite a while ago. Um, but um, yeah, I want to do something drastic and kind of take change my path really i was like i gotta do something drastic because i was felt like i was getting pulled down somebody else's destiny type of thing so I, that took me down a long journey of self-discovery confidence building uh, my wife is actually from taiwan i met there that's why i ended up staying in asia for, for about 10 years um, but towards the end of that stint where i actually kind of built a life got some self-confidence um, a software company kind of fell into my lap during the dot-com era um, and it's kind of a long story but what ended up happening was I could just see early on, this is going back more than 15 years ago, how Google was driving the purchase decisions of this consumer software company that I was, I was running, right? Again, kind of fell into my lap, didn't know how to design, didn't know how to do um, a computer, any, any type of computer coding, anything like that. But I could see um, when I ran this software company, small one, that um, Google was driving all the purchase decisions. I was like, how is this happening? Because what was ended up happening was even back then is people would search for stuff online. You'd land back then in a forum or the precursor to like blogs and stuff. And we had affiliate marketing back then. We actually had AdWords too. It was, it was like, you know, back in the day when it was like 10 cents a click or 25 the cents wild, a click. Wild, wild west, yes. <laughs> and affiliate marketing just ran. And we were paying, um, you know, these guys were working out of their house, basement, apartments, whatever it was. Uh, the big ones, you know, we're getting 50, 60, $80,000 a month checks. And we were just one affiliate marketer. So this to me um, just really blew my mind how we had a company, we had investors, um, we were doing the compute, the support, uh, you know, our, our piece of the 50% commission, which is what we were paying the big affiliates really started to get whittled down to nothing. You investors, product support, um, you know, all the stuff that went into it, we're, we're getting, you know, five or 10% of it. And then at the end, and these guys that were doing a little bit of the uh, work, we're getting half the profit or half the sale anyway. Um, so really opened my eyes up to, to Google and um, web design and kind of the way people were starting to, to look for products and services. So we ended up winding that company and selling it, uh, moved back to the States. I'm in Kansas City right now, which is which I kind of have roots. And um, I, you know, that was a nice uh, payday, but it wasn't like a quit forever, buy an island, never work again type of a sale. Right. Um, so what I ended up doing was I'd been up buying this car and I was talking to this guy who was doing auto detailing. And I was like, dude, he was, he was, he was um, selling these auto details for like 25 bucks a car to dealerships, making nothing, killing himself. Where I said, dude, if you had a, if you had a your own website, maybe you could start selling details for a hundred dollars a sale, $200 a car, something like that directly to the public. So long story short, I ended up making a promise. I didn't think I could keep. Again, I, I saw where leads were coming from. I saw the path to Google, followed the ROI trail to web design and, and Google. And I said, you know what, I'm going to, whether I can do this or not, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. And I'm going to deliver a website to you. Um, it took me like a week. I made the ugliest one page uh, Microsoft front page website you've ever seen. It was like purple and yellow. 
Uh, but lo and behold, 60 days later, the guy starts getting the phone to ring, you know, and then he calls me up not long after that and says, dude, you've changed my business. You've changed my life. Ben, at that point, 35 years old, never had done a website before. I was like, I know what I want to be when I grow up. You know, I mean, you this guy, this guy's um, really happy. It was the most rewarding professional experience that I ever had. But I was also like, dude, I can make some money from this. So, yeah, I went from that D through Phil's winding ride through Asia, through, you know, ending into a software company. And then, and then just, you know, again, making a promise I didn't think I could keep and just doing it. Uh, that's what got me into web design. And here we go, you know, more than 12 years later. Now I've got, we've done hundreds of websites and have scores of SEO and digital marketing clients. And that's really kind of what got me there was, was, um, was that one little, one little website. Wow. That is awesome. What an incredible journey. Congratulations. You've also done something that I've done. I'm curious if you did it the same way or not. You got somebody more famous than you to co-author your book with you. So you got John Jantz of Duct Tape Marketing, which I'm a huge fan of, to co-author your SEO for Growth book. How'd you do that? I love it. I um, what ended up happening in the SEO world is for for, for when I got started to about six years ago or so, it was a very um, uh, introvert friendly business, meaning we could move the needle for people and never have to talk to folks, write checks, didn't ask questions, the the phone ring. Then all of a sudden, Google started coming out with these algorithmic changes that were really punitive. Panda and Penguin and things like that started going. People just started to like, you know, tank. Their rankings would would disappear. And Google just changed the way they started looking uh, at uh, at SEO. And they started looking, I think, at the bigger picture of holistic marketing. So you couldn't just focus on making keyword stuffing change on your website or volume based backlinking anymore. They really, you know, they talked about content being king for a long time, but they didn't really mean it because we saw what was moving the needle. But then back about six years ago or so, they when they said content was king, they meant it. And they made the algorithms um, kind of reflect that. And what ended up happening to me was I was like, geez, I can't just focus on this, have these technical blinders on for SEO and just focus on the technical piece because Google's counting so much more. They're counting social media participation. They want to see that you're blogging and investing in good content on your website. They want to see, um, they want to see that your reputation's in, in, good, um, in good standing all, all around the, the web and in different places. So when you started to look at this, I was like, geez, what they're looking for now is a basically a marketing based scoring system and not just kind of this technical SEO piece. And you started to see, you know, websites back then were lots of pages and very thin. Now they're narrow and very deep with content that really comes back to marketing. So I was like, geez, if I'm going to really succeed and have a sustainable model, it's going to actually make people money and have me be around and not get killed by the next algorithm. I'm going to actually have to learn marketing, looked around, who's one of the guys out there that's really good at what he does and, 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 and has that kind of holistic systematic approach. John Jantz was the guy read his book. And then I, I looked at that and I was like, well, he's actually doing things the way I was building websites, which is we reverse engineer um, websites based around search behavior. That's a great way to get started, not do SEO after a website's built, but do it beforehand. Well, that's his approach to marketing, figure out who the ideal client is and reverse engineer your marketing plan around your ideal client. So I thought that really married up. So what I ended up doing, I loved his stuff. I ended up joining his network. And I think this is key, is the ability to find a person or an influencer like John, where you can actually meet, join a, him in a way where I was able to roll, rub shoulder to shoulder with him and, and um, meet with him and develop a relationship. One, and his network allowed us to do that because it wasn't one of these course things we were done from a distance. He actually has, you know, almost his own network where you're, you're meeting with people on an annual basis or even in some cases a quarterly basis. That's really important to make those relationships where you can do face to face. So that was one key for me. Um, the second thing was, is I figured, man, I can do exactly what you said. So I was a little bit, uh, um, I don't say I was scheming about it, but my intention was I have to find a way to shortcut my way to authority. Cause I can't let, I can't do it like John did back in 2005 and make the first podcast and do it over the course of 10 or 15 or 20 years. I got to find a faster way. And I figured the fastest way I can do this is ride somebody else's coattails. So I joined his network with the intention of proving myself to him. I did that. And the way I think I really was able to earn his trust is I joined his network and I gave, man, I gave and I gave and I gave, I proved myself. I joined his stuff. I participated. I, I did webinars. I guest blog posts for him at the end. He really saw my body of work and knew what I was talking about. So the one after I was able to um, show him or present him with a manuscript of a lot of the SEO um, tactics and things that I did. And I said, Oh, there's two ways we can approach this. I can either, can you write a forward for this for me? Or can you come on as a co-author and we can use this to launch another business? I had given so much by the point of that three year period, he was all over it. And that's how um, I was able to get him to join, not only join a book, we've actually now partnered on some other businesses and um, it's really kind of taken my career off in, in a whole nother direction.
I that bet. was how I did it. <laughs> Congratulations. That is awesome. What's the biggest mistake you see small business owners making when it comes to the web? I still think today people are brainwashed by thinking that their website's the static digital brochure. Um, it has to be a marketing platform now, and you have to think of it as an investment, not a cost of doing business. And I still think the vast majority of people that, that we see or that come to see us or, you know, they build that website at the one time and they kind of just let it sit there. And if they do anything online, they do it in these like one dimensional little hip shots or, or they, um, or they'll put their best stuff up on a third party platform where it kind of has a couple little, you know, chances of some real time eyeballs and then it kind of dies. So to me, it's like, you have to make your website, your body of work, your evidence that you're an authority, you have to post it there and share it out. So people come back to your site where you can pixel them or retarget to them. And I think that's really the biggest problem I see today is, you know, folks don't see their websites like that. They see this as this kind of a one dimensional thing they do and, and they let it sit there and then they kind of do everything where it really should be your marketing hub and you should tie everything back together and you should be building it um, up and, and use it as kind of the proof of, of, you know, why you're the best at what you do. I think that makes a lot of sense. Now you mentioned um, content marketing, you mentioned SEO. I think a lot of small business owners are probably afraid of SEO because as you mentioned, the algorithm keeps changing. It could take a while. It could take a whole lot of time and not turn into anything or it might be great and then it changes. What's your biggest bang for the buck SEO tip for a business owner? I think two things I would have people focus on is one, look at your website with a fresh set of eyes and know that the one of the biggest, we call this the biggest mistake, if you will, is that most people just don't do the work. They don't do any of it. So some of it just doing, doing a little bit of, um, of content marketing on your website or a little bit of SEO sometimes will uncork a lot of value. Uh, but I think the biggest thing really that people can do right away that everybody has a chance to do and doesn't have to even spend a whole bunch of money on is to work on your reputation because that's what the kind of economy we, we are these days. People, they have the information at their fingertips. If I'm looking for a new web designer or a new product or a service local or national, you're, they're going to do the research online before, that, especially before they make a big ticket decision. And the more that you can stack up your social proof in terms of Google reviews or maybe whatever your niche is, um, that really, ma really makes a huge, a huge impact. It can make the phone ring. So anybody out there can go and make a habit out of asking for reviews and making sure they put them on the right platform where their, where their companies are. And I've, I've been doing this 12 straight years and, Every time we have a customer that works on their review strategy and goes for say maybe a local, so let's just say a local business, for example, goes from no Google reviews to like two or three to, to 50 or a hundred, it changes the whole game. It pulls them up into the maps. They've got a lot of people saying that they're the best at what they do. And that's what we want these days. We want somebody when we go online, we just want to see the choice, make it easy for me. Prove to me, just, you know, there's, I see there's 10 different choices for a plumber or whatever it is. Show me the best one and prove it to me with reviews and I'll pick that one. You take the, you know, kind of that picking out of it for me. Everybody that focuses on that is going to get a big return. Awesome. With all the, all the amazing success you've achieved, what's your biggest challenge now? I think um, something I'm struggling with right now is that uh, I'm really, I got a classic kind of an e-myth type of a situation where I I do a lot of the work. Um, part of it is because I love doing it. And part of it's because I'm afraid if I delegate too much, I'm going to lose some of the edge that I have. Um, and it's hard to get, you know, people. I mean, I just learned today that one person I had for a little while was, was not being, um, you know, reflective, I think, what my I am to the rest of my clients. And, and it hurts to see that uh, that happens. And when you're a smaller team, I've got seven people all together. One hire makes a huge difference for you. So hiring that wrong person, it can be a huge impact type of deal. And that, that's something I think I'm going to struggle with for a long time. I can understand. I have resembled that remark at times. I've had employees, you know, it's, I've gotten phone calls from jail. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so, you know, so, and some are surprised, right? I got an email today from somebody who already left. Was like, I was like, I can't believe that even happened. And I didn't hear about it. And yep. it just basically kind of, and I mean, if you care about what you do and you care about your clients, I mean, that hurts. So absolutely, it really makes you reflect. Absolutely. Who's an ideal client for you? I think um, anybody, we'll put it this way. I've, I've run my business through um, locally. So, you know, we dominate, do pretty well here in terms of Kansas City searches, Kansas City web design, Kansas City SEO. But I've been, I've been doing some more personal branding, more podcast guesting. Yeah, but I feel like you can't market yourself with a Metro City name that way. So I've changed my name and I did it so in a way where I thought I would pinpoint, 
I, I added another brand, I should say, that would add um, point to who my ideal clients are. And it's called Bare Knuckle Marketing. That's my new marketing brand that I'm going to go after. So I want to go after really any client who feels that they want to take the gloves off and really be aggressive with stuff. Cause I talked to a lot of business owners over the years. And what surprises me is I think everybody says, yeah, they want to grow and they want to do stuff, but I can see in some people's eyes that they want to be the best. They want to be number one on Google. They want to dominate their market. They want to be like I am for my little SEO business or my Kansas city web design. I mean, we go online and look for us. We look like the 800 pound gorilla. So I want the people that really want to be the 800 pound gorillas in their market. And I think there's a lot of people that'll go and they'll flow. They don't want to take, go to the next level and that kind of thing. But um, the most aggressive types are, that's my ideal client. And that could be anybody from, you know, the, the five man plumber to, um, you know, we've got some guys right now that do hundreds of million dollars in luxury watches. Very cool. All right. So we're, we're for our folks listening and watching this who are resonating with what you're saying, where is the best place we should send them to to learn more about all things Phil? Check out the book seoforgrowth.com. That's got, was kind of a brain dump in about 200 pages worth of, of uh, info that we did with John. So that's a great one. And check out kcwebdesigner.com. That's, that's still kind of where it all, the little website they could, what started it all. Um, awesome. And I'll leave you with one other thing. I've had a really good, um, experience myself personally with doing shows like this podcast guesting it's been a total game changer for me um, to go out and leverage other people's audience you know it all comes back to personal branding and authority um, so you can go out and build your own campaign and do this kind of stuff and go out but i actually partnered with john to do podcast bookers podcastbookers.com will actually go out and help people get packaged up and get booked on other shows so that they can reach new audiences and help build their own personal branding and authority and get all sorts of great backlinks in a lot of cases. It'll help them with their SEO and sometimes get reviews. All right. Awesome. We will send them there. We will get a copy of the, we'll tell everyone to go get a copy of SEO for growth. All of that will be in the show notes. Phil Singleton, thank you so much for joining us today. You're the man, Seth. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening to this special productivity series of the Direct Response Marketing Podcast. I've interviewed hundreds of the most successful entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and CEOs all over the world, and I want to share with you one of the biggest ways I've discovered to triple your productivity that I've learned from these amazing people. Even better, I'll pay you $500 to test drive it. Just go to take the500challenge.com. That's www.takethe500challenge.com to learn more. Thanks so much for listening. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.